but there's got to be another way around this. Go on then. Either move, right? Because every year they're going to be queuing up saying, "I'm hungry, give me a sandwich." <laughs> no, you're not having another sandwich. Once again, it's an utterly ill-informed discussion. I'm just saying, there's no point queuing up oh. every year. Oh. Do you want a sandwich? Here's oh. a sandwich. But Carl, the next year, can I have a sandwich? Where's your brother? He died. <laughs> I know you're a big fan of Professor Richard Dawkins, the evolutionary biologist. He wrote a book, uh, The Ancestor's Tale, in which he predicted a post-human world. Uh, this was his, you know, his kind of hypothesis, if we were to... to, to uh, well, let me read what he's written. If nuclear war destroys humanity and most of the rest of life, a good bet for survival in the short term and for evolutionary ancestry in the long term is rats. I have a post-Armageddon vision. We and all the other large animals are gone. Rodents emerge as the ultimate post-human scavengers. They gnaw their way through New York, London and Tokyo, digesting spilled larders, ghost supermarkets and human corpses, and turning them into new generations of rats and mice, whose racing populations explode out of the cities and into the countryside. When all the relics of human profligacy are eaten, populations crash again and the rodents turn on each other, and on the cockroaches scavenging with them. In a period of intense competition, Short generations, perhaps, with radioactivity-enhanced mutation rates, boost rapid evolution. With human ships and planes gone, islands become islands again, with local populations isolated, save for occasional lucky raftings. Ideal conditions for evolutionary divergence. Within five million years, a whole range of new species replace the ones we know. Herds of giant grazing rats are stalked by saber-toothed predatory rats. Given enough time, will a species of intelligent, cultivated rats emerge? Will rodent historians and scientists eventually organise careful archaeological digs and through the strata of our long compacted cities reconstruct the peculiar and temporally tragic circumstances that gave rat kind its big break? Carl, thoughts? I mean, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Don't worry. What's your concern, Carl? What's your concern? Nothing. Tell us. <laughs> no. You can say. I you can, can't. You can. This is so unprofessional. It's what? What? What have we done? What? Talking about wool? No. <laughs> Come on, Carl. What's the problem? What's the problem? You say. <laughs> he's great, and he's, he's so scared. Um, Come on, Carl. What's tell us? I don't know all the ins and outs, so I don't want to get into it. What? The thing. No, well, you, look, can, you can't. Look, people are perplexed now. What's the What's the thing, Carl? What's the thing? What are you worried about? Say, is it, is it an email that's been received by the head of yeah, XFM? Yeah, you, you've got the email. Open. You, you can talk about. You can say what it. Okay, yeah, let me just without, say. Without, I don't understand it. Please know that under uh, under a ruling at the Old Bailey, any reference yeah. to Adam's state of mental illness in any news report will constitute a breach of the ruling and therefore lead to serious action from his lawyers. That's right, and that's true. Subject, we can't we can't talk about that. You can play his records and. Sing his classic sing, songs. Sing songs. Yeah, it's best just to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what we, Yeah, Carl was a little bit worried. There's no way I was going to mention that or influence anything, and I totally agree with the law, so don't, don't panic, Carl. I should have never been sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's like, you know, accidents happen. Go when, on, then. When things like that happen, right, you know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And, and once things are in your head... Yeah. ...it's difficult not to mention it. I mean... When uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> yeah, one, right, <laughs> yeah. me uh, my mum's sister Hazel, right, was, was seeing another bloke. <laughs> um, it's weird because she's a lesbian now. <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> that must have been an interesting Christmas. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, she was seeing this bloke and he looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. He looked like Ken Dodd. Looked like Ken Dodd. So people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd." So I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> One thing I've I've noticed because like, I occasionally go to the gym. And you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques. Just they, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really 
And I've noticed in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance floor. A vest, yeah. You know, and it comes straight off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change a head. No, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a program, and it was done in the 50s or 60s, where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up, and it still worked, right? Right, OK. And that was in, like, the 60s. Or right, whatever. OK. Well, so, to, well to, to say the change of head makes no sense at all, because just, if you put a, a, a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident if... I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say... Um, As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. Well, what it wouldn't be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body. What, than your own? What I mean is, say if um, you're wondering about, uh, for, some, for some reason, there's an incident... You have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six pack. Right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might as well. <laughs> I mean, I know not. I came up with the see through skin idea, but it's, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the. No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's, see not the, like it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. Well, stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, no, you but sometimes look- you can't help it because it's been hot. And it's, like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> Yeah, go on. So, they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So so what I mean is, yeah. rewind that, right, and imagine all that happens again, but I've I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh, just some fella who's died and, I, and my body was injured and they said, we've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now say if... if They're laughing at you. Uh, They're, they laughing laughing at the body. They're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I oh, know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. So so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, yeah, it's not my body. Oh, no. But, but it's not your own. I'm not being funny, though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well... Do you like them? Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body. Yeah. No, because they're not my hands either. <laughs> So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Do you want one? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let, I think we should have a jingle for this. Okay, I've got... I've, uh, yeah, I've got a jingle. It's very similar to chimpanzee. Ch- chimpanzee that. Yeah. Well, let's hear it, let's hear it. Okay. Oh, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent. So, Chicken okay. Freak of the Week, you've spotted a this freak is this where, week? This is where somewhat, I think, offensively, you pick on someone who's who's not like other people and say it's your favourite freak of that week. Yeah, I remember well, we had the woman whose uh, legs look like the hind legs of a dog. Um, we've had the little fella with the ageing disease with the little head playing the piano. That's, that was your favourite. I think that's your probably Freak of the Year, isn't it? It's a pretty so, good one. So, wh- wh- so uh, what's this? 
Is it a man um, with a, a horrendous injury, or is it a congenital um, birth defect, or what? Yeah, but you put it like that, and now it sounds like I'm being tight. It sounds like I'm being out of order. But I'm just giving him a mention. <laughs> <laughs> just giving him a big shout out. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> quite a lot going on in the freak world. Um, <laughs> Always is. You've, what, you've been visiting hospitals the last week, have you, when we were away? No, there was a, there was a thing on the, on a website. This isn't even the one that I've picked, so... So this is just a bonus. This is a bonus freak. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, go on then. Uh, this is a free freak. It's a fella called a lobster man. <laughs> the lobster man, of course. <laughs> Again, good name, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what are you going to get? Some, got... some succulent I meat. Like the idea with... that, I like the idea that the vicar on the christening suggested that. <laughs> I know you want to call him Mark. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Look at his What's his name? Uh, Mark Michael uh, Webster. Right. Um, right. Uh, yeah, have, have, have you thought it? about a nickname? Not really, no. Have you, no, have you looked at his hands? Yeah, it, we, we don't want to talk about that because... Do you know they look a little bit like lobsters? De- well, yeah, but it's quite deformed. It's a, like, you know, we Can can't... I suggest lobster man? <laughs> That's terrible, Vicar. <laughs> that is terrible, Vicar. We're, we're gonna... <laughs> Go on, then. Yeah. We're going to see. This is what the sort of feature you come up with, Carl. So, Lobster Man. There's probably people listening now with, you know, lobster feet. Right. Lobster hands. So, um... Squid Boy. <laughs> so, Lobster Man, what does, uh, what does Lobster Man do? Does he uh, fight crime? Not that much. Okay. Apparently, he got into a bit of trouble. He was in a restaurant. And, uh, this was years ago, by the way. And someone picked him to eat him. No, so yeah. that apparently yeah. the waiter, uh, said, oh, you shouldn't be sat here, you should be in my pan, or something. Oh, dear. And it, uh, they had a fight, got out of hand. Yeah. Oh, got out of claw. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so that, that was... What do you mean they had a fight? What, 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 I mean, what did he do? A waiter took the mickey out of someone yeah. with... No. No, enough. can I just make clear? I'm assuming it's his hands look a bit like those of a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's fused, so it's just like two big fingers. They're right. fused, I assume, probably in the womb, and they're just like, instead of like having yeah, five yeah, digits, yeah. they're fused in it. But it, I mean, he can pick stuff up, can't he? Yeah. What does he pick up? He mainly eats crabs and jellyfish, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was having a fight with the waiter, he, he snipped off his nose. <laughs> Right, so anyway, he just he just held on to the waiter's bib. Yeah, exactly. and the waiter was yeah. screaming, "Go and get him off me!" Yeah. So yeah. anyway, does but... he eat other lobsters? Does he? Does, does he think he would eat lobster, <laughs> or is it kind of? <laughs> Dick, uh, would he feel bad about eating lobster? Right. The, the little cheek of the freak that we've gone for, anyway. <laughs> the what? The little uh, freak of the week, yeah. cheeky freak of the week. Mm. We've gone for um, this Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in. Uh, you can't have a Siamese lad, can you? All right. Yeah. This Siamese twins uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date. Blind, that's the first time ever. Yeah. Um, and all it was, he was he was doing all right for himself. He, he used to go on the like those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right then. All right. They 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 did this circus show, right? Yeah. And uh, everything's going well. The, the, you know, they're, they're selling out the tents and stuff, people coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing all right for himself. Yeah. Right? Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think the Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. There there is, there's there's, there's is two people, they're conjoined. No, 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 but it depends, doesn't it? The one that I showed you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was that was a, 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 was a, uh, a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send potato chips to Esther Ranson and say, doesn't it look like Norman Cook? Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> we'll bin this feature. No! <laughs> No, it's, it's just, they're uh, two people. They're two people, conjoined twins. Yeah. Right. So these they just have to have, they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's, yeah, they were doing all right, and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what? How is that? How is that cheeky freak of the week? Just, bec- just because it got my interest, and I kind of thought, why don't you just look both ways? 